What are the differences between build artifacts and pipelines artifacts in Azure DevOps and how do they compare to Azure artifacts? Today we're going to answer those questions once and for all. Let's dive into it. Hey, welcome back to Coder Dave where we try and do DevOps just better. With Azure DevOps using similar names for different things, there's quite a confusion between build artifacts, pipelines artifacts and Azure artifacts. And in fact, I've received a lot of comments and questions about them on all of my videos related to Azure Pipelines, as you can see. So what are the differences? Well, we will go through them one by one, and at the end, we will have a quick recap and some recommendation on what to use when. But before we do that, we need to understand what an artifact is, especially in the context of Azure DevOps. Using a simplification, an artifact is any kind of file or files that your build produce and that you may want to reuse in another build, in another job in the same build process, or even in a deployment or release pipeline. For example, the compiled DLLs that you have as a result of your CI can be stored in an artifact to be then deployed by another job. And same thing for the disk folder of a Node.js application, for example, and so on and so forth. Or let's suppose you wanna save the output from one of your uh, steps in a pipeline to then review it later, well, you can package that in an artifact as well and save it. Now that we know what artifacts are, let's see how the different type of artifact differs in Azure DevOps. And let's start with build artifacts. Build artifacts are the older type of artifact that you can find in Azure DevOps, and they've been there basically since the inception of Azure Pipelines. And uh, they are basically the built-in storage mechanism for pipelines. They can be used in both classic pipelines, the one uh, created by the UI, via the UI, and the YAML pipelines as well. Build artifacts are published via the publish build artifact task and can be downloaded with the download build artifact task. And when you publish them, you can instruct the task to either push the content up to the Azure DevOps cloud or server, or to copy the files to a local file share instead. And if we take a look at how you can use them, build artifacts can be consumed from both within the same pipeline that created them or from another build pipeline. And additionally, build pipelines can be used if you want to consume your artifact from a release pipeline triggered by the build completion. Oh, and you can always download your artifact from the build status page dashboard. And as you can see on screen, you can also check out the content of your artifacts directly in the UI. All right, let's now talk about the pipelines artifact. Those are the newer flavor of artifacts, if you will, and as such, they can be used only from within YAML pipelines. One of the main benefits of the pipeline artifacts is that they can dramatically reduce the time it takes for both uploading and downloading them. This is because the way they are transferred and stored. And this is, of course, especially true for bigger artifacts. Until fairly recently, Pipelines artifacts couldn't be used from uh, classic release pipelines or from other pipelines in general, but recently that behavior changed, so now their usage is very much similar to build artifacts. And to publish the pipelines artifacts, you can use the publish pipeline artifact task, and you can download them using the download pipeline artifact task. Alternatively, since this feature is only available in the YAML pipelines, you can use the publish keyword and the download keywords which are just the abbreviation basically for the whole task. And if you publish a pipelines artifact and then you wanna use it in a deployment job within the same pipeline, you don't even have to use the download task because the deployment job will download it automatically. With that said, there are still a few differences between publishing and downloading artifacts between build and pipelines artifacts. The publish tasks are virtually identical with the only differences being that in the publish build artifact task, here on the left, you can optionally choose to further include your artifact in a tar file, while this is not present on the right on the publish pipeline artifact task. This one instead allows you to add some custom properties to the artifact. They must be in JSON format and all keys having the prefix users dash. And it gets more interesting if we look at the download task. As you can see in this side-by-side -side view, when you download a build artifact on the left, you can choose if you want to download the whole thing or just specific file from the artifact. You can also set some parallelization settings and other parameters. When downloading a pipeline artifact instead, you don't have that option, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. And if we switch the task to download the artifact from another pipeline or run instead of the current run, we have one more difference. 
Aside from a different positioning of the fields, you can see that when you download a pipeline artifact, you can choose to do so even if the pipeline run you are targeting have failed. And that basically covers all there is to say about build and pipelines artifacts. If you've noticed though, I keep comparing those two, but I've never mentioned Azure artifacts. Why? Well, because it's a completely different thing. But before we talk about Azure Artifacts, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This not only will help more people benefit from it, but will also mean a lot to me. Thank you. So Azure Artifacts. Well, as I was saying, it's very different from both Build Artifacts and Pipelines Artifact. It's a completely different service that serves a completely different purpose. If you look at both build artifacts and pipelines artifacts, they are very generic, meaning that you can save in them whatever you want. And what Azure DevOps does is just packaging that in a zip file and save it somewhere. Azure Artifacts instead is a typed package repository. It supports multiple package types such as NuGet, NPM, Python, Maven, and Universal Packages. And you can basically see it as an alternative to Artifactory, Nexus, GitHub packages, and services like that. And you may have noticed that I mentioned that Azure Artifacts supports something called universal packages. And even though that sounds very similar to what we've seen before, it is conceptually different. You would use universal packages when you want to create something that has a lifetime completely independent from the pipeline that created them. In fact, both build artifacts and pipelines artifacts are always tied to the pipeline that created them. And in fact, you can download them from the pipeline page and so on and so forth. But if you want to create something that is completely independent and can exist outside of the pipelines, then is when you would use universal packages. Another big difference is about pricing. Both build artifacts and pipelines artifacts are always free, no matter how many artifacts you save, how many files are in them, or how big they are. But Azure Artifacts instead is built by the size. You have a free grant of two gigabyte for each organization, but once you reach the maximum storage limit, you can no longer upload new artifacts and you will need to either delete some of your existing artifacts or set up billing to increase your storage limit. All right, now that we've seen it all, let's recap and see my recommendations. Build artifacts are the older type of artifacts and can be used in both classic and YAML pipelines. They are fairly slow to upload and download. They are tied to a specific pipeline run and they can be used to trigger a deployment via release pipelines. Finally, build artifacts cannot be shared you can use them for storing anything you want and you don't pay for the space you use. Pipelines artifacts, on the other hand, are newer and faster, but they can be used only in YAML pipelines. They are also tied to a specific pipeline run, they trigger CD in both multi-stage pipelines and release pipelines and cannot be shared as well. Likewise, they can be used to store anything and they are free. Finally, Azure Artifact is a completely different service. Packages stored in Azure Artifacts can be used in both classic and YAML pipelines, and their upload and download is as fast as with pipelines artifacts because they share the same underlying technology. Being a different service, Azure Artifacts are independent from the pipelines which have published them, but like the other types, can be used to trigger CD. Finally, they are the only type of artifact that can be shared with developers, even cross-organization, but they can only be typed packages. And last but not least, you get two gig of space for free, but after that, it's a paid service. So how would I recommend you use these type of artifacts? Well, I would say use the build artifacts only if you're using classic build pipelines, because there are really no other reasons to use them, being them the older and slower type of artifacts. Use pipelines artifacts if you're using YAML pipelines, and you don't need to share those artifacts with other people or teams. Finally, Azure Artifacts enable developers to share their code and the result of their CI very easily from a centralized location. So use them if you need to share your artifacts with your team, cross-organization, or even publicly. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any more questions about build artifacts, pipeline artifacts, and Azure Artifacts, and I will try my best in answer them all. What are the differences between build pipeline? Today we're going to reply to reply <clears throat> over my videos over. <clears throat> and at the end, we will have a quick, quick output from one year. All right, let's now talk about the YAML. Now they can dramatically. <clears throat> if you took a look at backup, backup. Finally, check out this video over here with all you need to know about the differences between classic and YAML pipelines. But that's it for me. 
Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Code Day.